Anticipation is one of the most common things that players ask for help with. And when I'm talking to coaches, this is probably the number one thing that they want help with for their players, especially at the higher levels. But when you dig a little bit deeper, this is all about time. People want more time on the shots. They either want to be able to get to more balls, they want to be able to prepare earlier, or they want to be able to get in better positions to hit the next shot. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about five things that you can work on. Three of them are going to be about anticipation. Two of them are going to be about reactions because being able to anticipate gives you a lot more time. And then if you can do things to improve your reactions, that gives you additional time as well. So I'm going to be breaking them down and helping you to understand how to train them and improve them. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to my channel and get the notifications turned on. I help players to improve their technique and their tactics and that kind of thing. But one of the big areas that I work in is I help players to identify things that aren't working within their body so that they can address them and play at a higher level. Okay, when it comes to improving anticipation, there are three things that we can work on. I'm not going to spend too long on the first one, but I do need to mention it briefly, and that is having a good understanding of court geometry and tactical awareness, because you're going to hit a shot, and then based on the shot that you hit, it increases or decreases the likelihood that they'll hit certain shots, so that's where the anticipation process starts. Now, obviously, the level that you play at changes this dramatically, because better players have got more options available to them, but just think in real basic if I hit a good heavy deep forehand I push my opponent back my opponents deep it's really unlikely they're gonna hit a drop shot on the forehand side it's really unlikely they're gonna hit slice it's a much lower percentage shot to go down the line so I can anticipate and predict that they're gonna go back cross court and I can set up accordingly in a decent position so I can expect them to go back cross court if they hit a good shot I'm in position if they hit a poor shot I can move forwards and attack Conversely, if I hit a weak shot to them, it lands in the middle of the court. The opponent moves up into the court. Now the shot that they might hit is potentially very different. So I can anticipate that. I can expect them to either attack cross court or down the line. And because of that, I might need to move back. I might need to have a real wide split step so then I can react. And obviously that's why reactions are so important. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. But that is step one, understanding basic court geometry and basic tactics, because everything else is gonna be built upon that. And obviously when you first step on court, that's all that you have to go on, that you've then gotta turn yourself into like a computer program that analyzes what your opponent does. So let's look at those two things now. Okay, so we've got court geometry, we've got tactics. Now we get into the real skills of anticipation, the things that you're gonna to have to train yourself to work on. And these really are skills. You're not gonna watch this video and be able to do it just from that. You've gotta actively practice it and you've got to practice it in point and match situations. So these skills will take time to develop. So the next thing you've got to do is you've got to train your visual system to pick up on visual cues, things that your opponent's doing that maybe give you an idea of what shot they're going to hit. Their orientation to the ball is going to factor in, so how close and how far they are away. The way that their feet are pointing, the positioning of their hips can give you an indication. What their upper body is doing can give you an indication. But one of the big tells is going to be how they set up with their racket. That's normally the, the most obvious thing that you can look for. So that's where I'm going to start. So when it comes to watching your opponent's racket, and remember, you're adding this to what you've just seen based on their court position. So if we're thinking about being at the baseline, if my opponent is shaping up like this, realistically at the baseline, my opponent's gonna try and hit a topspin forehand. Very few people hit slice, so we can start to anticipate that yes, they're gonna hit a topspin forehand, and if I push them back deep, like we just said a moment ago, they're probably gonna try and go cross court. So we can anticipate that. On the backhand side, more people use slice on the backhand side than they do on the forehand side. So we've gotta be looking for that. If my opponent's got a two-hander, that's going to be a little bit easier to tell because they'll have two hands on as they go back. So if my opponent is deep on the backhand side, they've got two hands, they're probably going to be going back cross-court. If they've got one hand, so a two-hander, they take the hands off, they're still probably going to go back cross-court, but now we're expecting the ball to maybe be a little bit shorter, maybe to skid a little bit lower because they're hitting a slice shot. It's a little bit harder to tell with a one-hander, but there is a difference between this and this. So you've got to train your visual system to watch what your opponent's racket face does so you've got an idea of what they're going to be doing. And this is going to be important for dealing with drop shots as well. Now, if they're behind the baseline, theoretically, they shouldn't be hitting drop shots. But when you're in close, 
you know, we got the option to attack down the line, we've got the option to attack cross court, or we can play drop shots. So you've got to really closely watch the angle of the racket face, what it's doing. So as they move in for that short ball, are they set up? Then you've got to watch because a lot of the time people will just open the face of the racket, they'll change their grip, and then they'll hit a drop shot from there. So you can watch for that. The same thing on the backhand side, you know, are they going to potentially attack cross court and down the line? Again, a little bit easier on a two-hander because they'll have two hands. You'll see them make a switch and then you'll be able to try and predict a drop shot and anticipate from there. Obviously, if they're hitting a slice backhand, it's going to be a little bit harder to tell. So you're going to have to try and closely watch the racket and look for the racket head speed, which is why I said this stuff can take practice and you have to train yourself to do it. Because if you've just started learning tennis, it's really hard to pay attention to all this stuff. So this is a little bit more advanced as you play more. You've got to train your visual system to identify these cues. The next thing that we can look at is maybe the positioning in relationship to the ball. If someone is really close to the ball and they have a habit of getting too close to the ball, more than likely they're going to be hooking the ball cross court more often. So I'm trying to hit a, a, a forehand. If the ball's in here, it's really hard for me to hit down the line from that position. It just doesn't work. Same thing on the backhand. So if someone gets too close to the ball, they're going to be more likely to hit it and hook it cross court. So that's something you can pay attention to. If they're further away from the ball, you know, that's a more ideal position. Potentially they can go either way. So just be kind of paying attention to, to where they are in terms of how close they are. If someone tends to hit the ball late, they're going to be more likely to go down the line because it's just in relationship, it's a, a later contact. So if someone always hits the ball late, expect more balls to go down the line or maybe inside out. So again, you can start to look at these things. And then lastly, we've got the feet and the hips and the way people shape up in that respect. Now again, the level of play affects this. High level players, they can attack in both directions from different stances. But at lower levels, people will often only be able to do one thing. So maybe for open stance, they're going to go cross court. For more down the line, they're going to be in a neutral stance or a closed stance. So you can start to train your visual system to look for those things to try and identify the shots that they're going to hit. But I'll say it one more time, it does take training and you're going to have to work on it. And then the third and final part of anticipation is going to be noticing tendencies and things that your opponent does. So we've just talked about visual clues, we're adding that to our understanding of court geometry, but as you start to play points, your opponent is potentially going to do the same pattern of play over and over again. Now like I said, higher levels people have got more options, but more at lower levels, a lot of the time if someone gets a short ball, they'll know that they're terrible at hitting down the line, so they're always going to go cross court. So you can recognize that in the first few games, if they only ever hit cross court on a short forehand, then you can start to anticipate and predict that and move more towards that side and maybe move a little bit sooner. Obviously, if they then start crunching the ball down the line, it changes things and that's why you need fast reactions as well. But a lot of the time players will have tendencies, both on the ground strokes, both on their serves. You know, when you approach the net, if you approach to someone's backhand, a lot of people will just go down the line on their backhand because it's easier, especially if they're under pressure. So if they've proven that they can only hit one type of shot or they prefer to hit one type of shot from a specific situation, you can start to anticipate and predicts that. And that's why I said you've got to be like a computer software program. Okay, we've got court geometry, now we've got visual cues, and then we've got tendencies. And like I said, this stuff takes training, you've got to work on it, you've got to develop your ability to, to notice what your opponent's doing, and the longer you play for, the more you work on this over time, the better your anticipatory skills are going to be. Okay, so we've looked at anticipation. Now we need to talk about reactions because sometimes you just do not know where your opponent's gonna go. When you watch professional tennis players, sometimes they are reacting. So if you slow it down, they're moving before their opponent hits the ball, but the majority of the time they're reacting. So they're landing their split step just after their opponent makes contact, so then they can react to the shot that their opponent hits. So the faster your reactions, the more time you're going to have on your shots. So the timing of the split step and the way you do the split step is important, but I've made other videos on that, so I'm not going to cover it here. What I am going to talk about is the visual recognition. You've got to try and identify that ball as quickly as you can. So anticipation, everything that comes before contact, now we're talking about after contact. As soon as the ball leaves their strings, you've got to try and pick up where it's going. 
It's very easy to identify whether it's going to your forehand or your backhand. It can be much harder to identify the exact type of spin, the exact speed, the height, so where it's going to land in terms of depth. And the brutal reality is that a lot of people's visual systems aren't able to do this very well, which is why so many people prepare late. So many people react slowly, even though they're really trying not to. So the best thing that you can do to improve your reactions is to actually train your visual system. And the awesome news is that you can do this with really simple drills. I've created a free program that's going to help you with it. Um, there's a link in the description. It's going to allow you to download a free Tennis Vision Starter program, and it's going to help you get started on this process. Because you need your eye movements to, to work efficiently, you need to be able to judge distance and depth, and you've got different parts of the brain that deal with spatial awareness. They need to be working really well so that you can detect what happens as quickly as you can, so you can re react as quickly as you can. It's just the way it is. You need to have fast reactions, fast visual processing times in order to react quickly on court and it's very easy to train. The next thing that we've got is going to be the footwork and the movement patterns. So again we're not going to talk about the split step but you can train your movement responses. So we've got the visual recognition but we've also got the movement to get to the ball. You need to train yourself and you need to practice and rehearse over and over again because you need to automate these things. If you're receiving a drop shot, you need to have automated the footwork to get to that drop shot. Now, a lot of the time, they never, people never practice this. So they get in a drop shot in the match and they try and move to it. But there are more and less efficient ways to move to a drop shot. When you watch most pro players play, they've got the split step. Obviously, they're watching for their opponent shaping up for things, but the next step is actually gonna be back. So they don't go from here and step forwards because it's actually faster to step back. So you watch someone like Federer, there's a lot of examples of different players doing it. They recognize that their opponents changed the face of the racket and then they start running like that. So you can practice that first step, you can practice that movement to the ball. Same thing for your wide footwork. There are only so many combinations of things roughly that you're gonna to have to do, so you can practice that first step and the movement out to the wide forehand so that you can just do it in two or three steps. Same thing to the backhand. You know, how quickly can you get out to that wide backhand? How quickly can you get to those angles? A lot of the time a difficult ball to deal with is going to be a short angle to your backhand. So how often have you practiced reacting and doing those first few steps so you can hit that shot? So for reactions there's really two things that we can work on. It's training the visual system and literally working on your reaction speed and visual processing time. And then we've got these footwork patterns, improving the quality of your footwork, rehearsing them over and over again until it happens automatically. And now you've just got way more time on your shots. So these five things combined, tactical knowledge, training, visual recognition, looking for patterns and things that your opponent does, training your visual system so you've got faster reactions, and then programming your footwork, those things can give you way more time on your shots, and that's going to be really important as the level of play improves, so it's really going to help you to play at a higher level. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, like I said, download that free vision program. It's going to be a great way to get started, but if you want more help with this stuff, this is the, some of the sort of stuff that I work with players with. The reality is that a lot of players' systems, whether it's the visual system, the movement, whatever, just they're not able to do the things that a player needs to do to play at the level they want. With brain-based training, you can literally change what's possible in terms of your tennis ability. So if you would like help with that, there's also a link down in the description. Uh, use that and we can have a chat and then see if there's a way that I can help you. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up. And if you've got any questions, leave them down below.